as we take one last look at the closing paragraph of First Peter, which we could call a final salutation, let's ask, what can you learn, what can we learn from a personal greeting like she who is at Babylon sends you greetings, so does Mark. What can we learn from that, and what can we learn from the kiss of love? Father, as we look one last time at this final unit, show us how profound and sweet and wonderful this picture of the divine family is and what the gospel creates and the affections that flow from it. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. By Silvanus, a faithful brother, as I regard him, I have written briefly to you, exhorting and declaring that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. She who is, she who is in Babylon, who is likewise chosen, sends you greetings. So does Mark, my son. Now, there are so many questions there that I simply cannot answer. The two big questions about who this is, is one, the church, usually considered the church in Rome, because Babylon is a kind of code word in the book of Revelation three or four times for Rome. So it could mean she who is chosen, likewise, namely this elect church. So Peter's in Rome in this understanding, and he's sending greetings from the church in Rome who is chosen to the churches of Pontus, Galatia, Asia, Bithynia, which were mentioned in the first verse of the book. The other possible meaning is that it's his wife. That's the position of Alfred and numerous others. She, who is likewise chosen, and really means Babylon, namely the, the city on the Euphrates. We know there was a Jewish community there in the first century. Peter could have been there ministering, and he argues strongly that that's the case. Here's one little, little argument. Uh, he says, who is likewise chosen in, in verse 1 of chapter 1, when it refers to those who are chosen, it's talking about individuals, not churches. So likewise chosen or chosen together with, if it were consistent, would be an individual here, not a church. Another argument he uses is that when you list off the five provinces in Asia Minor, it looks like they're being described from an eastern vantage point in Babylon rather than a western vantage point in Rome. Little things like that. Frankly, I don't know how we can, with any great confidence, decide whether this is the church in Rome or whether it's the wife of Peter and whether Mark is the son of Mary from Acts 12, 12 who, according to um, Eusebius, became the interpreter for Peter. And so this is a spiritual mark, my son, not a physical son. But then again, if this is his wife, this could, he could have named his son after the man who worked with him so closely. So, frankly, um, I do not know for sure whether this is personal an individual, or whether it's corporate, and whether this is a spiritual son or a real biological son. But here's the question that we can learn from significantly, namely, why end this way? Why end with greetings from a church or from a person? And to answer that, let me connect it with this kiss. He says, greet one another. So I've just sent greetings from the church or from my wife and my son. Now you greet one another with the kiss of love. Now we could get all bent out of shape here wondering if he's commanding that we all kiss each other without fail when we meet each other. But I doubt that we should press it that way First of all, because 
how often would he mean to kiss? Like, if I go out of the room and come back in, do I kiss all the Christians in the room? Or every Sunday, do I kiss every Christian, like 40 or 50 people as I walk out of church? Or We know he's not getting entangled in those kinds of details. Surely, he doesn't mean, even in his own day, this is the only way to greet with affection, or this is the way you always must greet with affection. He's saying, this is a beautiful statement. A kiss, I don't know how they did it. Maybe they did it on the cheek. Maybe they did it on the forehead. Maybe they did it on the hand. I, I don't know how they did it. But the, what the point is, love expressed, hearty, earnest love expressed. Look, look here through the letter. I just listed off all the places. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly. Listen to those words, sincere, brotherly, earnestly, from a pure heart. Beloved, I urge you, love the brotherhood. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly. Beloved, do not be surprised. Greet one another with the kiss of love. You can't, you can't miss the point that Peter, as he comes to the end here, he wants to leave ringing in our ears that the true, true grace of God creates a family. And this family doesn't just dutifully respect each other or dutifully do nice things for each other. This family loves affectionately and earnestly each other. I think that's amazing. That's the amazing thing we should end on. That the true grace of God, Christianity, in its sum, is the creation of a family, a divine family, children of God, brothers and sisters. And that divine family is marked by love. And not just dutiful love, but affectionate love that wants to find culturally fitting ways. And it may well be that we should do more kissing in our day. If, we, if we're part of a community that is so afraid of hugging or any kind of touch because people are all bent out of shape because their ethnic background or because of their personalities, we may need very much to take this seriously. There is a deep, sweet, warm affection, and all the more when you realize these people are suffering. This is an embattled church, and that all the more is the situation in which we need to be close to each other and affectionate with each other and not just coolly pleasant towards each other. So it is astonishing to me that this amazing book that calls us to suffer so often is summed up by a, a true grace of God that expresses itself with greetings that are full of affection.